Hey guys, today I'm gonna to show you how to make glass pane effects in Apple Motion. Glass panes are a trend that I predict are gonna be hot for 2023. I made a whole video on my main channel about what's gonna be trending in video. If you wanna see those trends, I'll link to that video down below. But glass panes, I think, are gonna be amazing. Now, FX Factory recently dropped an awesome plugin pack of glass pane effects for Final Cut. So if you think it's easier just to buy that pack than to learn to build them yourself, go right ahead. I will drop that in the comments. But if you wanna learn how to make glass pane effects yourself, today is your day. Now, I do wanna warn you, you're gonna be seeing me do things in Apple Motion that you have not yet seen me do. This tutorial is gonna be a little bit more advanced. You're gonna to have to follow super closely because it can get a little bit confusing with the layers that we're working with. So I just wanna caution you that you need to pay close attention. And if you're brand new to Apple Motion, this might not be the best tutorial to start on. If you want a really great foundational education in Apple Motion, I have to recommend my course, Motion Launchpad at jenjager.com. But for those of you that have been sticking around with me for a while, Get ready, this is gonna be a fun one. Let's just dive right into it. Here is the project browser when we first open Apple Motion. This time we're going to select a Final Cut effect. My preset is 4K, 24 frames per second. My project duration is six seconds. And I also forgot to mention that subscribers to my Patreon get my working motion files. I know a lot of you guys like to dig into my projects and kind of like reverse engineer things. So if you're interested in that, head on over to my Patreon page. Okay, let's go ahead and open this project. So we've got this effects source drop zone right here in our layers pane. And I'm just gonna drag and drop a B-roll shot in here. Now at the end of this project, before we publish it to Final Cut, we're actually gonna clear out this B-roll shot, but you definitely need something in there so you can see what your effects look like as you build them. The first thing I'm going to do is select this effects source layer, and I'm going to make a clone layer. So you can hit the shortcut K or you can right click and select make clone layer. So this is one of the things you haven't seen me do on this channel. Clone layers basically mimic whatever the original layer you cloned them from was. So I'm not duplicating my shot here. I'm actually just like referencing that other shot. Let me just show you what I mean. So if I go into my finder, pick another totally different B-roll shot and drag it and replace my first B-roll shot, you see that my clone layer changes as well. So whatever I do to this first effects source layer will affect the clone layer. So that's the first thing to know about how clone layers work. I'm gonna hit Command Z to undo what I just did, go back to our original shot. So like I said, whatever I do to my effects source shot will affect my clone layer, but whatever I do to my clone layer will not affect my effect source. Does that make sense? So watch this. I'm going to select my clone layer in my project pane, head on over to the inspector window, and let's increase the scale to 125%. But if I disable that layer, you can see my original effect source layer is still at the original 100% scale. All right, at this point, I'm going to rename this clone layer because if I don't rename these layers, you are going to get completely lost. So I'm going to rename this left clear and I'm going to zoom out on my canvas window so we have some negative space around our frame. All right, I'm going to select that left clear layer and I'm going to head on over to my mask menu, grab the rectangle mask and I'm going to draw a very long and I want this to be long outside of my frame here, rectangle mask. Now I want to reposition this mask so that the right edge is dead center in my frame. Now instead of using the position tools in the inspector window, I'm actually going to be using the rulers in my canvas. This is something different that I don't usually do, but because we're really aiming to make everything symmetrical here and I'm working with masks, the rulers are for sure the way to go on this. So this is something different you haven't seen me do before. And let me show you how to use the rulers if you don't know. So if you're not seeing the rulers here at the top, and left side of your canvas, you're gonna to wanna to head on over to view and make sure the rulers are enabled. Now you can see here that in the center of my top ruler, I've got a, a mark here for zero. What I wanna do is run my cursor to the left side of my canvas till I get this double-ended arrow, hold down my mouse key and drag that yellow line to the zero mark. And sometimes to get super precise, you have to zoom in on your canvas. Now let me zoom out and I'm selected on the rectangle under my left clear clone layer 
and I'm going to make sure that that rectangle aligns with that yellow ruler mark. Okay, now again, select it on that rectangle mask. Let's head on over to the inspector. At the mask tab, we're gonna convert this rectangle to points. I'm gonna queue up my playhead to the very beginning of my timeline. And what I wanna do is add a keyframe here on my control points and grab the left edge of this rectangle and drag it to that center mark. So my rectangle is really just a line at this point. So I'm going to grab that left edge, hold down the shift key so I'm going straight across and close up that rectangle. Now I'm going to jump 10 frames in my timeline by just hitting the shift key and the right arrow. And I wanna make another guide with my ruler at the negative 400 mark here in my canvas. And now I'm going to grab the rectangle mask in my project pane. I'm gonna zoom in really tight on my canvas here, grab the left side of that rectangle mask and drag it to that 400 mark. Holding down the shift key so I just keep everything straight. All right, let me zoom way out here. Now I'm gonna hide my overlays and run my playhead in my timeline so you can see what's happening. That clone layer is starting from nothing and expanding to the left. Now I'm gonna turn on my overlays again and I'm going to jump to the beginning of my timeline again. Again, select it on the rectangle mask. Let's head on over to properties and let's make a keyframe here. Now I'm going to jump to the two second mark in my timeline and I'm going to use my ruler again to make a new guide at the negative 2800 mark. Now in the inspector window, I'm going to reduce my X value on the position line so that the right edge of my mask is in line with that new guide I just made. All right, now I'm going to hide my overlays again and I'm gonna play that back. So there is our first glass pane. We're not quite done with it yet. I'm gonna queue up my playhead to like the middle of the action here so I can really get a good look at that glass pane. Let's now select the left clear layer in our project pane and let's add a drop shadow to that to really make that glass pane pop. To go the opposite of 315, let's go to 495. So now the drop shadow is on the left side of my frame here. And let's crank up the blur all the way to 100 and give it some depth. All right, let's add a filter to this glass pane. So I'll select it on it again in my project pane. Let's head on up to filters. Let's go to color and color wheels. And on the global wheel here, let's just dial up the saturation a bit. All right, so that is our first glass pane. We have a bunch more to build. So the first thing I'm going to do is duplicate this glass pane. So now I have two of them, but this one I want to go in the exact opposite direction. So we're going to have to make some modifications and jump back into our rulers and guides here. So first I'm going to rename this layer. We're gonna call it right clear because this one's going to go to the right of the screen. I'm gonna turn on my overlays again, and let's add a ruler here to the positive 400 value in our canvas. I'm gonna select the rectangle mask on the right clear layer in our project pane, and I'm actually going to reset the parameters on our position properties in the inspector window. Let's cube our playhead to the beginning of the timeline, Zoom in on our canvas. So you can see our rectangle mask right now is off center. I'm going to grab it and align it with our center guide here. Now I'm going to jump 10 frames in my timeline. I'm going to make sure I'm on the edit points tool here in my canvas. So right now I'm on the transform tool you can see here. I can select edit points down here in the tools menu or I can just right click in my canvas and select edit points. And now I can grab the outer edge of that mask and bring it to the positive 400 value in my canvas, lining it up with that guide. All right, I'm gonna zoom out on my canvas here. Let us jump to the very beginning of our timeline. On the rectangle mask on the right clear layer, we're going to add a keyframe on the position line. Then let's jump to the two second mark in our timeline. And we're going to need to create another guide here in our canvas. So we're gonna to go to positive 2800. While I'm perfecting the placement of these guides, if you guys like this video, if you feel like you're learning something, let me know by giving me a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button and ring the bell. All right, and now I'm going to change the X position on the rectangle mask in our right clear layer so that the left edge is in line with that new guide we made at the positive 2800 mark. And now the last thing we need to do is select that right clear layer 
And on the drop shadow, I'm going to change the angle of this back to 315. Let me turn off my overlays and show you what we've got in perfect unison. We have our glass panes widening out and flying off the screen. All right, let's add some other colored glass panes to this project. So the first thing I'm going to do is select the left clear pane. This is the first one we made, and I'm actually going to duplicate this guy. Now I'm going to disable the duplicate that I just made, okay? So I'm going to uncheck it here in my project pane, and now we're left with the original, and I'm going to rename the original left tint because I actually want my new one to be underneath my top pane. On this guy here, I'm actually going to delete the color wheels filter and I'm going to add some new filters. So I'm going to add a blur and in the inspector window, I'm gonna dial up that blur. You can see in my canvas how it's affecting my glass pane. I'm also going to add a colorize filter to this left tint layer. So again, go to filters, color, colorize and let's remap the whites to any color that we want. I'm gonna go for this like kind of chartreuse color and I'm going to dial down the mix a little bit on that. So it's a little more subtle. And now we're gonna do the same thing to our right clear pane. So select the right clear pane in our project pane. I'm going to duplicate it, disable the duplicate and rename the original to right tint because I want it to be underneath the original clear version. Again, we're gonna delete the color wheels. I'm going to go to my left tint layer that we just made, grab these two effects, select them both by holding down the shift key, hitting command C to copy them, and then paste them to that right tint layer. And on the colorize on this one, I'm actually gonna have this pane be a different color than that chartreuse. Let's go with more of like a teal look. Now what I'm going to do is head into my project pane and enable the two layers that we muted. So I'm going to head down to the timeline and I'm going to look for these red keyframes. We're gonna play with the position of these. If you're not seeing these red keyframes, you need to go to the top of your timeline and look for this icon here and make sure it's turned on. That reveals those keyframes. So I'm going to select the keyframes for both the left tint rectangle mask and the right tint rectangle mask by clicking on one, making sure it's white, holding down my command key and selecting the rest. And now I'm going to slide all of those keyframes down in my timeline, three frames. So now when I play it back, you can see those tinted glass panes appear under the clear ones. Now this looks pretty great and we could leave it here, but I actually want my glass panes to come at a diagonal angle. So to do that, I'm going to select all of my rectangle masks here in my project pane. We're gonna select the right clear mask, hold down our command key to select the rest of the masks. Head on over to the inspector window under properties. We're gonna change this rotation to negative 30. So now my glass panes are moving at an angle. And you can see why I had to make my rectangle masks so long at the beginning because I need them to clear the frame here when we move at a diagonal. So they needed to be longer than my frame. And the last thing I'm going to do is play with the motion of these glass panes. So I'm going to select all of my rectangle masks in my project pane, we're gonna to head to our keyframe editor. If you don't know where that is, it's at the very top of your timeline, these three interlocking diamonds. This reveals our keyframe editor. I'm gonna click inside my keyframe editor and hit Control A to select all of those keyframes. And then I'm going to right click and I'm going to make the motion on these an ease out. So you can see how the animation paths have changed in my keyframe editor. And that just changes the motion a little bit. So now let's publish this guy to Final Cut. You remember when we started this project in our project browser in Motion, we made it a Final Cut effect. The next thing we need to do is head on up to File and go to Save As, and I'm going to call this Glass Panes Diagonal. And under category, I already have my own category here called Jen's Effects, but you could just start a new category by scrolling down to the very bottom of this menu. Theme, I'm going to name this Glass Panes. And let's just hit the Publish button. So now here we are in Final Cut. If I head on over to my effects bin, you can see my glass panes diagonal is in my effects bin, but you can also see here that the video that we used as a placeholder in motion is actually included in the thumbnail. So let me just double click on this to apply it to this clip in my timeline. 
And there you go. It looks really great on this B-roll shot. But if I head on up to my inspector on this effect, you can see here that there's no options for changing anything about this effect. So what we'll want to do is head back into Apple Motion and just like publish some parameters. That means that we can actually tweak the effect here in Final Cut. Let me show you how to do that. If you've never seen this before, I'm going to head back over to Apple Motion. And I think what I really want to be able to do is change the colors of these secondary panes here. So what I'm going to do is select my first colorized filter here in my left tint layer in the inspector window under the remap whites line. I'm going to hit this disclosure button here and select publish. And I'm going to do the same on the mix. Now, if I head up in my project pane to the project line and then in the inspector window, go over to project. You can see here that I've published the parameters of remapping my whites and the mix. I think I want to rename the remap white too, so that it's clear to me in the future in Final Cut what I'm actually changing. So I'm going to say left pane color. And now let's head over to the project pane and do the same on the right tint layer. Head on over to filters, the remap whites. I'm going to hit this disclosure button select publish and also publish the mix. And then again, at the top of my project pane, hit project on the publish parameters. Let's rename that guy right lane color. And so now the last thing we want to do to make this look super professional is to clear out our effects source. Remember how in Final Cut you could see this B-roll shot in here. I'm going to select the effects source layer in my project pane and I'm going to hit the clear button at the bottom of the inspector window under the image tab. And now we're back to that drop zone and I'm just going to hit command S to save this guy to publish it to Final Cut again. Let's head back on over to Final Cut. And now back here in Final Cut to see the changes that we made, I need to delete the effect out of my inspector window. And then when we head on over to the effects bin, you can see that my glass panes effect has the default Final Cut thumbnail. That's because we cleared out that B-roll shot. I'm going to double click this guy to apply it to my clip. And now when we open up the effect in our inspector window, you can see that we can customize the panes colors. So there you go, guys. That is how you make glass pane effects in Apple Motion. If this seemed like too much work for you, maybe you want to check out that pack from FX Factory that I linked to down below. But if you love tooling around in motion like I do, you probably thought this was kind of fun, I hope. If you want the working file, check out my Patreon. If you want to know what's trending for video in 2023, check out my main channel. And I thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I will see you guys again.